Hello everyone, welcome back to Concept Bio. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the basics of XRD and XY crystallography. That is something known as Bragg's Law. This is something that you have to learn in your 10 plus 2 level. So if you're from that region, hi, welcome to Concept Bio. So now I'll just be getting into it. What the Bragg's Law was given by the father-son duo that basically described the uh, reasons of why constructive and destructive interference occurs when a wave of light gets scattered. So now they had told two conditions. I, I'll first uh, describe what uh, destructive and uh, constructive uh, interference is. Suppose I have one wavelength of wave, uh, wave of light. Suppose it's like this. It undergoes some, some sort of scattering event and the resulting wave is something that looks like uh, this itself. And this has an amplitude of A. Okay. At the same time, I have another wave of light that goes like, that has a similar origin but once it gets scattered, it also has the same phase or the same pattern as the original one. This also has a wavelength of A. What happens when these two converge is something known as constructive interference where the amplitude, where they both add up basically and the amplitude here results is 2A, the addition of the two other amplitudes. Got it? So now here second one is, suppose that uh, in another case, suppose, uh, I'll just... Uh, okay, I'll just start again here. I have one wave over here, gets scattered, and it comes out with some kind of phase diagram with A. Okay. At the same time, that same source, when it gets scattered, it this means scattered, okay, like it hits some scattering event, and the resulting wave is completely out different out of phase from the original one. What even this will have the same amplitude A but in the opposite direction. What happens when these two con uh, converge or when they two interact is that they'll form no wave at all. These two waves are completely cancel out each other. This is known as constructive, constructive interference. Interference. And this is destructive. All right, like it's completely removed. There is no uh, resulting wave. So now what actually happens? What Bragg's law states is it gives the conditions on which that this constructive interference actually occurs. Now for our analysis techniques, constructive interference is very good. We really want constructive interference and we have to know what kind of criteria these constructive interference actually occurs. So now what I'll just describe here is suppose we have a lattice structure. All right, and this is the first plane, the second plane, the third plane, and we have atoms array. Suppose it's a primitive, primitive, uh, a primitive uh, cubic structure. Now I have some particular wave of light that comes perpendicular and gets scattered by this atom called A. It gets scattered away with some angle theta. These two angles will be same because the angle of reflection, uh, incidence and uh, reflected light will all be same. At the same time, I have another, another wave of light coming from the same source. All right, It gets scattered by this inside uh, atom that is B and that also comes out. Battle. All right. Now this is the criteria that they had to find out. See, this is similar to this. A scattering event happened over here. The, some sort of scattering event happened to this wave P, this wave Q, forming P dash, Q dash. Now we have to know: will it become constructive or will it become destructive? That is what everyone is trying to find out. So what they have to do now? They had given there were two conditions that had to be formed for diffraction to occur. One, there had to be some form of scattering, scatter. So we have that atom, it is scattering. Two, the wave, wavelength of light lambda should be comparable to the interlattice distance that occurs, that is D. So these two criteria, suppose it is being met. So we have some D and this wavelength of light is coming and hitting. So how do we calculate whether this is being constructively or destructively interfered? Now what, what they had told was that this will occur when the wavelength of light is an integral multiple of uh, is an, this occurs when the uh, interspace distance is some integral multiple of the wavelength so i'll just try to explain that don't get worried imagine i just redraw this whole structure again okay i'll just redraw it here this is our first plane this is our second plane this is my atom a this is my atom b this is p it gets uh, scattered to p dash this is q and this gets scattered to Q dash. You will see that I had drawn some, uh, left some area here. Why? Now see, if P and Q are parallel to each other, they are parallel to this point. Till A, they are parallel to each other. Correct? 
this Q line is having some extra distance that it is covering. I'll just draw that in yellow. See here, I hope you can see it. Here, this Q line is following some extra distance. Okay, so if we know, so what they had told was, if they, and this is distance is D. They told us that if this extra distance D is some integral multiple of the wavelength of light, then we will we can say that uh, uh, we can say that th there is constructive interference. So how do we know that? Now we know we know. Okay, fine. We understood n lambda. One side of the equation is there. I have to relate this with d because it's a function of d. This value is a function of d. So how do I do this? This is a big question mark. Let's just do simple trigonometry here. Uh, uh, geometry. I'm sorry. So suppose I have this atom A and this atom B. Now this is one line and now I know this line, this line is a 90 degree perpendicular angle. This is theta meaning this inside angle is theta. So this is theta. Alright. So now and suppose I name this point C and suppose I name this point D. So this is C and D. Alright. These two are uh, mirror images of each So I'll just work on AC, the triangle ACB. Now the triangle ACB where this is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'll just draw this a little bigger, I'm really sorry. So this is the triangle ACB, now I'll just draw it bigger here, like this, so this is your theta angle. Alright, now what is uh, sine theta here, sine theta is opposite by hypotenuse. So I'll just draw Right. So now I just I have to know what this CB value is. How will I know that? I know that sine theta is equal to opposite that is CB by hypotenuse that we know hypotenuse value is D. This is D, this is D because I already know this is D. So I can just write that this CB value C, uh, CB is equal to D sine theta. Alright. So similarly Similarly, I can say that BD is equal to D sin theta, correct? So you understood why sin theta is nothing but opposite by hypotenuse CB by D and CB is equal to D sin theta, B D sin. So now we go back to our equation. Now we know N lambda and has to, this CD whole line, the CD whole line should be some integral multiple of this, uh, should be some multi integral multiple of the wavelength. So N lambda is equal to CB plus BD that is N lambda N lambda is equal to uh, D sin theta plus D sin theta so N lambda is equal to 2D sin theta and this is your Bragg's equation where it relates the wavelength of light with D that is your interlattice distance that occurs and this was a major breakthrough because once you are able to understand that which uh, conditions do we get the constructive or destructive interference we are able to make a various kind of analytical techniques so I'll just try to summarize what they told was if the inter if the di extra distance covered by the two lights is some integral multiple of the wavelength of light then we will be getting constructive interference so if we get lambda 2 lambda 4 lambda 5 lambda is equal to 2d sin theta suppose then all these conditions i'll be getting constructive interference but suppose i have something like half lambda uh, is equal to 2d sin theta in this condition i won't be getting anything because it will become a destructive interference and this is what they had told i hope you have understood what bragg's law is this is a simple derivation for bragg's law and hope you all understood and enjoyed this derivation in the next video i'll be talking about how xrd works and uh, the extra cryptography works along with how their uh, how their design is and what their application can be so thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video